What's up guys? <laughs> no, we're not starting it like that. What's up guys? My name is Dan Danier Daniel. I draw cars. I turn them into 3D prints. Today we did a presentation over on Polymaker's Discord to talk a little bit about color match and how to use it. What's new with color match? What's the difference between using color match and like standard? I do these presentations every Friday night at 7 p.m. CST. You're more than welcome to come join the Discord. I talk a little bit about Hue Forge, talk a little bit about how to use the software, and if you have any questions or you're dealing with a project that you can't really get to work just right, I can definitely help you out with that. I hope you enjoy the video and I hope you learned something today. I will see you in the next one. Recently, Hue Forge released the beta to all the commercial users for color match. So we're gonna kind of go over how to use color match and why it's uh, important and how useful it is for your Hue Forges and all that good stuff. So the example that I have for today to kind of show what we're doing is got this Fallout character, Fallout logo. So traditionally with Hue Forge, Hue Forge was making the mesh for you. It was making your 3D mesh based on the luminance value or your RGB values. Um, as you can see, this is Let's turn on wireframe. We see this is your 3D mesh that it's making with all these uh, triangles, polygons. And the way that Hue Forge was looking at your images to make these meshes was it was looking at it with almost like a black and white filter. That's your luminance, right? So it was doing highs and lows based on your darkest areas and your lightest areas. So let's take it back over to cover. So in the past, this image would be like next to impossible with um your filaments with your basic like it's the color separation isn't there so i'll show you really quick um just kind of a, a regular thought process that i would think on how to how i would approach this image if i was just getting into hue forge and wanted to recreate this as a 3d print um as you can see we get a little bit of what we're going for let me try a different blue We can get kind of close, but we can't get that skin tone in there. Um, as you can see in the center with this update, we have these little equal signs. These equal signs mean that we've reached the saturation point of our filaments. Um, let me see. Let's just throw a beige in there. Get rid of the white. So yeah, so you can see it's just impossible to get the skin tone and the yellows and the blues in this. So in the past, uh, the next step would be going to color aware. Now the problem with color aware is, so yellow is in your uh, green or your red color space, and then blue is in your blue color space. So we would get rid of all of your, your green color space, this bucket right here, this green bucket. That's what we call it. I kind of went over what that meant in the last video that I did. Um, we'll get rid of all of that so that we don't have to, so that Hue Forge doesn't have to try to pick up what the green color space is. So for this, we've got blue on bottom and then red on top. So the way you approach it is you'll make your blue Hue Forge, you'll use your blue color space and make a Hue Forge in this color space, and then you'll make uh, the yellows that'll be in your red color space. So we're gonna make two hue forges and stack them on top of each other. And I'll show you why it doesn't exactly work um, in this particular image. Let's do this blue, this is a lot closer. So the background's looking good. Um, we've got the separation. We don't necessarily need this white. I'll actually just get rid of it. We'll bring in some blacks to start the red color space and we bring in another black to rebase because like i said it's a second it's a second hue forge on top of on top of another hue forge so here let me bring in white over this yellow mm. You see I'm having trouble trying to get the separation that I want here. Just because of, well, this is actually a really high TD. Let me just bring this down for demonstration purposes. So you can get it kind of close. As you can see, we got the, if you have a really low TD beige, you could definitely make this image work. Easier method now 
is color match. And the reason I say it's easier is because when we're in color match, we're actually making the mesh rather than relying on hue forge to make the mesh based on either that luminance value or your RGB values. Um, so you'll see with color match, we now have a mesh core and a color core. The way you go between these is there's a slider down here or a button that will let you go between. So let's go ahead and turn all these off. We'll just act like we didn't, we haven't messed with this yet. So right now we are uh, on the mesh core. So we're going to go ahead and try to recreate this mesh. Now, when you're first starting out color match, I would really highly recommend trying something like a two color image, um, just to kind of get your, your feet wet. And I would not recommend something with a lot of blending. Um, so, you know, just, just like this, this is a good example to start out with any kind of like video game or SVG type images, something that you could easily do in like a fusion 360 if you wanted to, um, I would definitely recommend that. But so we have this blue background. This is going to be our base, um, to the mesh. You can hold control on your keyboard and left click and it'll drag the color from your image into the mesh core and as you can see we've got a different kind of flag here where blue is so it's more of like a triangular like a house shape and then this one is a little bit different so what this is signifying is this blue one this is an actual filament that we have um, it's in the library and we can use it. This yellow one is a fake color. This is one that we brought in from the image. Um, so we'll just go ahead and we're going to grab all of the colors that we can see easily. Just to kind of get it, get a rough, a rough draft of the mesh that we're trying to build. Let me get this yellow over here. Okay. So this is looking good as far as the mesh goes miss anything no yeah it looks pretty good um so now we have all of our colors into the mesh core what we need to do now is if something's in the foreground it needs to be at the top of the mesh and then if something's in the background it needs to be at the bottom of the mesh um just because of the way that q forges are printed so you have a lot more control because you are literally creating the mesh. So like the face seems to be in the foreground. So we would want that at the top most. So we have some of these spikes. I think it's because of the image itself. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's not a Hue Forge thing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's just a bad picture. Like I said, white's on top for the teeth. Then you've got the skin tone underneath. And then you've got your yellows and your blues for the background. And then the black is the base layer. Um, so now we will go over to our color core. Looks a little bit different. Um, but since, how do I want to explain this? When we're doing these easy ones, you can pretty much match up one-to-one -one the colors that you use in your mesh core to your color core. When you start getting into a little bit more complicated images, um, it becomes a little bit more of a hassle to do that but it like i said it's a little bit easier now with color match for these simple ones when you've got to get that crazy separation of color because before like all you had was color aware and color aware is really hard for newer people to wrap their heads around so um just because there's three different color spaces and you need to know what colors belong in what color spaces how to edit an image and all of that jazz like it's not it's not a very simple process it becomes easier over time just like anything um, practice makes perfect but color match just takes all of that out of the equation um, there are some instances where color color match will be better for the project versus color aware and there will be some instances where color aware is better for an image uh, over color match so after playing around with it a little bit more we changed up the mesh um, you when you're doing the mesh core, you don't actually have to have black at the bottom. 
Um, it's not. It's just not a requirement. But so I played around with it a little bit. Uh, played around with the color core, and you know we got it pretty, pretty perfect. Uh, the teeth are a little, eh, but it's still pretty good. Um, I'm middle mouse clicking to show the slicer view, so that way I know like what the topmost filament's gonna be. So obviously this will be white. Um, so I'm, I'm banking on the teeth being white whenever it prints. If you have any questions regarding Hue Forge or anything like that, go ahead and drop them in the comments. Um, I will do my best to get back to them. Like I said earlier, we do these presentations at 7 p.m. CST in Polymakers Discord. Uh, I do it for about 20 minutes, give a little bit of a rundown about what we're doing in Hue Forge and how to use Hue Forge. And there's also a live chat where you can ask questions. I'll answer them live. And then um, we do a little bit of a hangout afterwards so that I can help you with your projects or whatever the case may be. But definitely come check us out, come hang out. I'll put the link in the description to the Discord. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.